So in this video, I want to talk through how we can create a server virtual machine, keep it patched and up to date, and use that as a template to create other virtual machines in the future. So when we create those new VMs, they're already patched. Now the first thing I'm actually going to do is just create a new virtual machine. So this is going to become my template that I'm always going to patch and update, and then basically use to create those future virtual machines. So I'm just going to call this server 2012 data center template. I'm going to create that in my virtuals folder. The amount of memory doesn't really matter on this, it's not going to do much, but I'll just give it a gig. I need to connect it to the network, but I'm not going to join this to the domain. I'm going to create a new virtual hard drive. Now this is an interesting one. How big do you want to create this VHDX file? So in my case right now, I'm actually just going to shrink this down just for maybe future uses if there's quotas in use on the disk space. And if I know typically it's not going to be anywhere close to 127 gig, because a lot of quotas are based on its maximum size, not its current size. So I'm just going to shrink this down to 40 gigs, because I can always extend that in the future. So it's a 40 gig drive. And I'm actually going to do a fresh operating system installation. So I'm actually just going to browse up to my Windows Server 2012 RTM and install from there. Finish. So now I'm going to go through and I'm actually just going to install this operating system. So I'm just going to go through a standard OS installation, turn it on and complete that install process. For my product key, I'm just going to use the KMS keys. So on the Microsoft site, if you just actually search for KMS keys and in here, I'll see a Windows Server 2012 data center. It's the same for the server with a GUI and the core. So I'm just going to paste in this key because I use Active Directory based activation in my environment. Now I'm going to carry on with the installation. So my OS is built. I'm going to quickly just create a sort of default password for local administrator account. And the next thing I'm actually going to do is this is going to have got an IP address through DHCP. I might customize my time zone, a few other little tweaks. Then the big thing I want to do is apply the latest patches to this thing. So the OS is now built. I can do those little tweaks I may want to do. For example, maybe I want to enable remote desktop. But again, I would typically do that with things like group policy. So you don't really want to make a bunch of changes in here that is possible for a group policy and then gives you more configuration. I changed the time zone. But the thing I want to do right now is I want to install Windows updates. Now this may be something you would trigger from an internal source. This could be Windows Software Update Services. But for me right now, I'm just going to use Windows Update. So I'm going to go and check for the updates. I'm going to get recommended as well. And I'm going to go and check for this right now. So I'm going to find all the updates and I'm going to apply them all. Once the machine's back and all the patches have been applied, I'm actually going to go and do another check. So I'm going to go back to my control panel. I'm going to go back to my Windows Update. I'm going to make sure there's not any additional patches that I would now want. So I'm going to say go and check for updates again. Because if there are any, obviously I want to make sure I get as much put into this image as I can. Sure enough, there are some more patches. If I go and look what they are, there's just a bunch more updates. So I'm going to install those as well. And then I'll reboot it and I'll check again until there's no more left. So I've rebooted, I've checked for updates, there's no updates left. So at this point now, I'm ready to actually make this image available to be used as the template. But what I want to be able to do is every month after Patch Tuesday, I want to be able to apply the latest patches and create a new template. Now normally to create a template we run sysprep, but I can only sysprep an image so many times. So I don't want to sysprep this, then save it, then turn it on again in a month's time, go through the sort of specialized patch it, and then sysprep it again and again. That, that won't work. So what I actually want to do is take a snapshot 
of this machine before I sys prep it. And then post that snapshot of on the sys prep, export that away as the template, and then revert back to my clean image. I could take the snapshot while it's running. It'll dump out the memory, protect the disk state, but to be honest, I'm just gonna shut it down. So I'd rather have a clean known state. So I'm just gonna go into here and shut this thing down and create a snapshot of it in a shutdown. Notice I did not join this to the main. I don't have to mess around with constantly going backwards in time if it's domain joined. I don't need it domain joined. I'll do the domain join as part of a template application. So now what I'm gonna do is on this template, I'm gonna say I wanna create a new snapshot. So this is gonna freeze this point in time and I'm gonna basically label this. So I'm gonna rename it and say pre sys prep. And I'll say April 2013 patches applied. So now I'm good. I've got a point I can go back to. So now I'm gonna start it again. And what I'll actually see on the disk is it's gonna create a differencing disk for these future changes. So this is now my safe state. This is pre sys prepped, but it's got all the patches applied to it. So I'm now back on that machine, and now I can run sys prep. Now I can do the slash generalize OOBE shutdown, or you can just run sys prep, it's gonna open the folder, launch it. So I wanna generalize it out of box and shut down. So this is gonna remove all the GUI, the SID, the uniqueness, and make it available for me to now duplicate. So I'm gonna say run, do that process. So now this is basically the state, this differencing file plus the original that would become my template. I'm now gonna create another snapshot of the current time. So in this VM, I'm actually just gonna say snapshot. And that's our current time. So I'm gonna rename that just to say current. And I'm gonna export that out. So I'm actually going to PowerShell. I'm gonna use the export VM snapshot. So I can say export VM snapshot. And the name of the VM is my template. So my template was server 2012 DC template. And the snapshot, so the name I actually want to export out is that current. And I'll export it out to a path of my D to my PhDs and I'll run that. So it's gonna run that export and we can see that happening. And there's the disk populating. So the export was finished and what I now have is a nice shiny single VHDX file that has all those patches in it. It's been sys prepped so I can now use that as my template. Now I'd probably rename this to something now, maybe I'd say a template, and maybe I'll call it April 2013 update. It's up to you, however you want to, or you'd know, you just use some standard naming and you'd have some file, maybe some comment to say what it's up to date this is. But now back to my original virtual machine, I want to roll back the fact that I ever applied that sysprep. So then next month, I can just turn it on, apply the patches, and then repeat this whole process. So I would patch it again, shut it down, create the snapshot pre sys prep, and then turn it back on, sys prep it, shut it down, create that temporary snapshot, export it out, and then do what I'm gonna do now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete that current snapshot. I don't need it. And now what I actually wanna do, because my now state is gonna go back to the fact that it's been sys prepped. So it's currently doing that merge because I temporarily deleted that little snapshot that would have been tiny. But now I'm gonna apply this snapshot. So I don't need to take a snapshot of the sysprep state. I don't care, I've already exported it out. 
So I'm just going to apply it. And what we'll see now on the disk is it's basically going to junk that differencing file it had. So it's now gone. I'm just back to really that original pre sysprep state. And essentially now I don't even need this snapshot anymore because this is now just really the current state. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this snapshot as well. And it'll remove even that very small differencing file. And I'm back to that position. So now I've just approved this. <laughs> if I turn this back on, what I'll see is that operating system, it's not going to go through any kind of generalize or anything. It's just going to turn on, but it have all those patches applied. And again, as each month comes on each patch Tuesday, I'll reapply those patches and just repeat this whole process you just saw. So I've always got that nice, easy, up-to-date image. Let me just log on. Notice it didn't do a specialized phase of sysprep. It doesn't know anything that sysprep ever happened to this OS. So I can just repeat this over and over and over again, and I'm not running into any limits the number of times I can generalize an OS. So I am now good to go. And even better, I now have this great template we just created with all those latest patches, and I can now create a new virtual machine. So let's say right now I'm going to copy this. I'm actually going to go and copy it to my virtuals. And I actually need to create a brand new folder. So I'm going to create a new folder and it's going to be my direct access server. I'm going to paste this in. So that's done. I'm going to rename this just to be Savdal Direct Access 01. I can then go and create a new virtual machine. Now, uh, normally I would use this template from something like Virtual Machine Manager. I'm just kind of doing a really quick demo here because I would then import that into VMM, use that as part of a bigger template. So I'm just going to use this. I'll say it's 1024, but I'm going to use dynamic memory later on. Connect it to the network. Say I want to use an existing virtual hard drive that I already created, my template, and I'm done. So now when I turn this on, because remember I exported this after I created the sysprep snapshot version, it's actually going to go through that sysprep generalize, sorry, specialized phase and make it now a separate usable OS. So now when I turn this on, what you actually see is it is going to go through that complete specialized process. And while that's doing that, I would actually go back now and remember on that template, I want to get it turned off most of the time. I'm only going to turn this back on every time I want to patch it. And then remember, I would patch it, snapshot, sysprep, snapshot, export out the post sysprep snapshot. And then remember, we just delete that current snapshot. Then we apply that pre sysprep snapshot and then delete that snapshot. So we'll end up with just back to a now state virtual machine. This is very different from when we just restarted that original VM is actually now going through that complete sysprep specialized phase. So it's a separate OS and I'm good to go. I hope this was useful and I hope you can use this in your procedures. Again, this is just one option. Remember, I have a separate video and process where I have a PowerShell script to actually inject patches into an OS. So you do have many different options for this.